What's up, ladies and germs? Listen, the other day I had a question by Arizona Farang, a watcher. And the question was, why hang around Susu if you're not breaking bank? And I'm going to get into a few extra things today surrounding that in general. And then I was watching Taylor Made Dreams TV. Right now he's in Thailand. And he had an interesting topic that I want to cover. So, Rich is at the back of it again. Don't forget, subscribe. Click the bell notification. Hit notify all make sure you drop your comments make sure you hit that like button right now before we get started absolutely go ahead and share the videos on your facebook and your instagram for my travelers i highly recommend that you get the ebook and audiobooks on travel safety and dating and for those who want to live abroad the good life how to live or slow travel abroad available for instant download at payhip.com slash riches method. For those of you who need more individualized consultation, you can also find it through that link. All the links are also in the description below. So let's go. All right, ladies and gents. So today, as I walk around Sasua, right, I want you guys to take a mental note of where I go, what you're seeing, and some of the activities that's happening. And I'm going to circle back around to this key point before the end of the video. Now, the dude, Arizona Farang, man, he said, why would you spend time hanging out there in Sasua if you're not breaking bank? And also, he said, especially since that's what everyone expects. And he had a question mark at the end of it, so I knew it was a question. Now, I answer part of that first question in this way. Late last year, as I was leaving uh, Dominican Republic to go to Colombia, just before I left, there was a guy that became YouTube infamous in Sasua because he flew in, broke bank, and then had to literally beg people on a live on YouTube to help him get at least 50 to $300 to afford a ticket to fly out. Now, dude claimed... He got there to the airport on time, did not know that he got to be there earlier or else they closed. But what became self-evident was he didn't even have additional funds, access to a credit card or a budget to be able to say, damn, I missed my flight because of whatever reasons and I could still afford. It's going to be annoying, but I'm going to be able to afford to now say, you know what, damn it. I got to pay $50 for a flight change fee and maybe my next flight out is a day or two and that means I got to stay in Susua a little longer. For some people, they identify with that brother and they started following him, right? For some people, it was a car crash waiting to happen and they're following him because of that car crash, <laughs> right? For other brothers who travel a lot, who've lived abroad, or both, we saw it like, yo, what are you doing? You basically blew a quote-unquote budget. If you blow your budget, it's not a, blow, a budget, right? But you blew your funds on liquor, alcohol, having fun. Listen, we all can go, we all can break our budget by messing up and, you know, saying, oh, man, I'm going to spend this much Hola, on a vacation or even just going out on a Friday or Saturday night and go over that amount then it's no longer buzzing. Now, you know, it happens. That's life, right? But when that happens, hopefully we're not sitting at home the day afterwards like, God damn, I got to wait two weeks to my next paycheck or else I can't even eat. You understand? So that leads me to my next point, which is this. I'm not doing a judgment on people within my videos of how they choose to use their money necessarily. What I am simply saying is, hey, brothers, there is some of us who, as uh, there's another YouTuber named Bo Rakes, big up to Bo Rakes, man. I like what he says. He says when he comes out here in Susui, he's just seen a bunch of dudes lighting their money on fire, burning it up when it could be used somewhere else. I live kind of like by that same kind of motto, man, and I've been living by that motto all my life. When I was in Brooklyn, I used to be like, yo, why would dudes go and drop 300 on a strip club? Because, hell, I could stay home, message some shorty at the crib, have her come over, 
put on some music, go to the liquor store, buy me a little whatever that I drink on, right? And I could just have a good time. Olympiad. To negocio. Is your business? To negocio? I'm going to get into something here. It's because I was watching Taylor Made Dreams TV. Big up. I actually have met this dude, so this is no criticism. He had a topic on his channel a few days ago, and I'm going to tell you what I wrote as my comment. And then when I'm finished, I'm going to tie all these three situations together for you guys and let you hopefully just think about a different perspective, right? I'm just going to make a few key points about life in general and the decisions that we make, the choices that we choose to make and the results that we get or don't get based on the choices that we choose. You now, the topic that I was responding, my comment to, centered around this premise. When you choose to open up the bank, would you rather spend a little bit or would you rather spend a lot more in the long run trying to, you know, actually court someone with a result that's not guaranteed or would you rather know when you open up that bank, go to someone providing professional services where you know directly, hey, these is what I'm, these are the, this is the job that's going to be done for me hiring the real estate agent to find me an apartment. You understand? Now, my personal opinion is this. When it comes to my personal preference, I prefer, there's a word called intangibles, right? It's something that you can't put money on. When a museum gets certain items, they'll be like, yo, this item is priceless. Nobody could ever really truly pay for it. It's historic. You can't put a number. My, my, my thing is, I like to get my enjoyment from the intangibles that I bring to the table my personal feeling, right? And those intangibles are my conversation, my energy, my time. I prefer and I get enjoyment from using my intangible qualities rather than my opening up my bank to be able to pull, as we would say, uh, time with someone else, all right? Before I got to the places that are frequented, frequented by certain people with a certain mentality, like Colombia, Thailand, um, certain parts of Brazil, uh, obviously certain parts of the DR, the people that I surrounded myself with and who were drawn to me and I'm drawn to them, they never really had a moniker, a chant, a belief of, well, you're going to open me a bank either way. Right. And I don't necessarily have a issue with that statement. My question would be, what results are you looking for? And with that said, let me tell you guys my comment. Other than that first part of the comment saying, you know what? I prefer to get my enjoyment using my intangibles. The second part of my comment went like this. Honestly, I just think there are just guys who get more of a thrill by opening the bank. Then they use the saying, we all pay in some way. as a catch-all phrase to open the bank instead of using the other intangible qualities. So my thoughts are, hell, just say it. Instead, just say I'd rather open bank instead of all the other mental gymnastics. Now, just as there will always be the fairer gender, some of them, not all of them, who prefer to enter your bank or to get material things in exchange for time, just like that cereal box. Silly rabbit, tricks are for kids. Those silly rabbits do what they do with tangible items right so cars watches paying people bills whatever it might be 
instead of the intangible assets. And the garden tools, they'll receive it in exchange. It's not a complicated thing. They both just need to accept their names when they're called by it. Silly wabbit, tricks are for kids. And then if you go in gardening, listen, man, there's a tool for that, right? Neither is winning or losing over the other. It's just what it is. The opposite side of the same coin. They're in the same game, right? So I took some ad libs to my comments here because obviously we're in a woke environment, right? In regards to the topic of, well, you know what? You open that bank either way. It's just a question of if you want to do it for a little less or suppose you this idea that it's always you are going out there and you are investing more for something normal. And I'm like, uh, bro, I don't have to go take the fair agenda to a $500 dinner. That's a choice because your mindset is I got to impress. So I'll tie that back to the dude who came in here and got Sasua infamous by doling out a whole bunch of tangibles on booze, on good times, and then with one hiccup, proved that he was not ready to travel. And I'll bring that up like this. If you weren't ready and you were not in the financial position, bro, you better get with the one who don't mind you taking them to Mickey D's in, in, in Atlanta, <laughs> you know, or sit at a park. Now, one of the things I loved about Colombia, man, Colombia culture, the Colombians know where they get paid, man, and they don't get paid a lot. So they like, they got parks everywhere in Medellin, right? Every four or five blocks, you got a different park. They'll go to those parks. They'll sit there with their little beer, their rum, their, their, their Bob Marley, and they'll just have conversations. And they'll invite their friends or a group of people. You'll see eight people sitting in a circle just having simple, simple times. Listen, we come from a culture that's materialistic and it's embedded in our brain that the only way to, to, to achieve or to prove something, you're always trying to prove something, the individualistic culture is, here's what I can do for you when it comes to material things in life. Now listen, is it a necessity? Absolutely. But we got to choose. And then for the brothers and sisters who tell themselves, listen, man, this is a necessity in life. You got to ask yourself, am I in that position? When I, do, when I open that bank, am I using this thing to get me assets or liabilities? You know, the truth is, every time I go buy a beer, every time I go sip on some rum, every time I go on a, uh, when I get a massage, I'm coming back here to the activities that you can do and why you would also hang out in Sasua other than other things it's known for. Whatever value you put on the time you spent to earn that piece of paper in that bank, is it bringing you more value? If I got a health issue and I go for a couple massages, I'm choosing how and where I spent that valuable time that I spent in the past and which one is worth more to me and which one brings me back a higher value. I can go on an excursion, it's a memory, it's a place, I'm never gonna forget it. Hell, I could even take some photos to make sure I don't forget it. If I go and I get a nice massage, you know, and I pamper myself, there's something that's gonna make me feel better the next morning. It's neither right nor wrong. If I go and I enjoy a beautiful beach, man, and I soak myself in that sand and that nice salt water, I'm going to remember that. I'm going to miss that. I'm going to have a couple of photos of that. It's going to add to my soul. There's a reason why people spend thousands of dollars to go around the world to come to beautiful beaches, because they don't exist everywhere and might not exist where they are. But everything that I have as a human being physically can be found everywhere you live. That money, that homeboy that got infamous, 
spent. If he had said, man, hey, man, I flew into this spot. I overestimated my costs. I started a business. I opened up an Airbnb. And I got to the airport not realizing I needed to be there because it's an international flight three hours ahead of time. I thought it was like locals, my first time traveling out of the country. I thought you just had to be there an hour before. And now these people telling me I can't fly. I need your help. As another human being, I'm more likely to look at that and say, all right, you know what? This brother right here, he was using his well-earned bank for all that time and hard work that he put in to help him make more. It's going to have a future return that's more tangible, more important in the overall scheme of his life towards the freedom the financial freedom and fun that he's seeking in the future. But when I think about it, I'm like, wait, I'm supposed to not exchange my hard work and time, effort, problems in traffic, everything, and say, hey, buddy, let me help you out because you chose to go booze it up and make it rain somewhere because something was shaking in front of you or to take back to the Airbnb and the hotels and the whatever else. What? So now my question is, are you setting yours on fire? <laughs> and neither needs wrong nor right, man. You just gotta figure out if it's beneficial for you in the long run. For the fellas who think they're gonna get a good relationship like that, don't be surprised when you think you're bettering someone else's supposed life and they don't appreciate that or you're changing their life. This is the other thing I hear. Food for thought. Food for thoughts indeed. Because if you go back, if you fly back home and you're Western Union, $1,800 a month, hate to tell you, man, when you get settled or if you can't get settled, sure you're gonna settle with somebody else, right? Local or not a foreigner. There's some dudes who fly from one country to the other just to spend some time with their family. By the time they get back to where they're going, the person picked up with somebody else. How much care you think that person had other than the, the, the you know, the tangibles you're providing for them? How, how much will somebody put up with your stanky breath in the morning or, you know, your little funky attitude here and there every once in a while and you put up with theirs based on tangibles instead of the intangibles, right? Those are the things, the intangibles that really connect someone to you. And I ain't talking about fellas who just come in for two days on the weekend, man. I'm talking about those fellas who going back home and now they're saying they got a girlfriend, right? And while they're there, everything is cool. But as soon as they, you know, stop the funding from the states or wherever, or Canada where they live, everything falls apart. And then you got to ask yourself, man, if you're a younger brother and you're not established yet, you ain't got no investments towards, a, a, you know, a passive income, something that will repeatedly put more money in your pocket right? Without you physically having to get up and go to that nine to five every day. And you're still putting that in place, right? Are you ready? Would you rather spend that dough instead of one direction and another direction? See, I'm not pocket watching, but I will look and say, hmm, that was a dumb financial decision, <laughs> right? So, we all want to talk this crap. Oh, I'm not pocket watching. I don't care what you do. Bro, all I'm going to say is, I'm going to still be like, is that a wise decision for what you say you want out of life? And I'm going to move on. It ain't important to me personally, right? But I like to see people win. I want to see you win. I want to see all y'all who watch my channel, listen to some of my vlogs. I want to see y'all win, man. I want to see y'all be able to get we all want, not just once, but always and repeatedly. I want y'all to get, be able to get something solid that don't fall apart. All right? I want, at the end of the day, you know, I might just do something that's financial. I might put together a, uh, a cheat sheet about getting out of debt. You know, stuff like your student loans. Man, before you're going to do certain things, make sure you got that. Get out of credit card debt. You get out of student loans. you be able to pay that off. If you want to live abroad, you know, a cheat sheet on what you can do to actually work abroad, be able to lower those expenses and make income and be in great locations, man. 
Uh, I think I got to do a shorter version than that, and I want a little bit more in depth. So if y'all want that, put it down below. Let me know, and I'll put something like that out for you guys, man. The question when it comes to these tangibles is not can you and should you. The question is we all got to do it, right? I got to buy food. I got to pay for a roof over my head. Those things going to happen. The question is when those things come down to it, do I have the patience? Do I have the thought process to not be stuck like that dude and say, you know what? Where I choose to place this funding when I open up that bank today, is it benefiting me overall in the future? Is it giving me the freedom that I want and the power to be able to repeatedly get what I want tomorrow instead of today? Now, if you're a guy, man, you already spent 30, 60 years, 40 years working for a company, you secured all these different positions, hell, ain't nobody going to look at you and be like, that's a dumb financial decision. Here you are stuck in a country on a vacation because of where you chose to place those funds when you were there. And you've taken away now a bad memory, <laughs> not a good one. No, the same dude who was stuck. One thing I got to give him is that in a way, his tragedy became a little bit of an asset because I'm sure by now his channel that he had grew. And he's now politicking that into potential future earnings, right? But that ain't going to be most of the people who fly into here. They ain't going to be able to jump on a YouTube and beg for some money. All right? So... Like I said, food for thought. Just wanted to put that out there for you guys. Drop your comments. Let me know what you think both, on both sides. I know some people are going to hate on it. Some people are going to be like, that makes a good point. Some people are going to be like, I know somebody who, to me, just burning their funds that they could be using towards their kid, towards their future. They ain't even pay off their mortgage. So that means they ain't even own a house. They just think they do. And et cetera, and et cetera, and et cetera, right? Every little decision we make every day charts the course for the future because it veers us towards a certain direction slowly. Just remember that. California Farang said, what else can you do in Sasua? So the whole of DR, including this area, is known for medical tourism also. I have two casinos, a fort beach, including Cabarete Beach, saltwater fishing. You got your party boats, diving, and snorkeling. Among our folks... Expand your horizons. There's a lot of things in a lot of places. All your regular tourist stuff. If you've got more in-depth questions, go to payhip.com slash riches method. Get your consultation. Download the traveler's cheat sheet. And if you'd like to live abroad and the best life, how to live and slow travel abroad. And I'll check you guys on the next one.